Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and in this video we're going to be watching Iron Man 3 to see how accurate all the science and technology in the movie really are. If I'm right, we can access the area of the brain that governs repair wow. and chemically recode it. That's incredible. Essentially, you're hacking into the genetic operating, operating system, system of a exactly. living organism. Yes. Exactly. Can you not what? touch my plant? That red dot looks like it's over the parietal lobe of the brain, which is responsible for sensory input, like a touch, taste, and temperature, and none of which are actually related to healing any part of the body. There are pain receptors in the brain. I don't know of any healing activators. The more blood flow you get to an injured limb, then the quicker it'll heal, which is why if you get an injury in your Achilles tendon, it's really, really bad because there's almost no blood flow there. It'll take forever to heal if it ever comes back at all. Even if you could accelerate your body's healing factor like that, our cells can only divide a limited number of times. And healing in the way that we just saw, even if it does work, will significantly reduce your lifespan. <laughs> Alright, I think we got the cinema. <laughs> Probably a little fast, slow it down. Slow it down just a- That's awesome. Putting microchips and other technology in your skin should be done by a surgeon, but this is Tony Stark. He doesn't care. It's not actually new technology either. People have pacemakers in their hearts and they have cochlear implants for their ears, amongst other things. The big difference here is autonomy. Those people, and the, those patients rather, they don't have to think about their hearts beating. The machine just does it. And those people with cochlear implants don't need to think about hearing, right? Like you don't think about what's coming into your ear canal, you just hear the sound. Tony did implant the arc reactor literally inside of his chest and in reality it, the moment he turns it on he'll die <laughs> because even though he's really spectacular he is a human which means nothing we make is going to be absolutely perfect. So even if this arc reactor that produces wild amounts of energy is 99% efficient that 1% of energy that is lost due to excess heat will burn his chest cavity and kill him very, very fast. Tony built this to operate on arm gestures and that technology exists today in all sorts of forms like if the Xbox Connect or the Nintendo Wii from way, way long ago. The danger here is that it's literally in his arm, meaning it'll work even when you don't mean it to. As an engineer, he should know that a far better design would have been to just send limbs instead of a shoulder or a knee because it doesn't really do you much good to just have like two Iron Man shoulders on you. It doesn't really give you any sort of benefit in a fight really. If you have the palm, that makes a lot more sense or like the glove or whatever you want to call it because then you can actually like shoot blasters from them. But just having a knee or a waist or a shoulder, it's kind of pointless. If one of those parts is off alignment, it'll affect the rest of the suit. Meaning if his shoulder, for example, is like slightly tilted or like cracked in some sort of way, the rest of the arm will actually not align properly. Each of those individual pieces will need their own power source, which is likely a micro arc reactor of some kind, with propulsion so that all the components can reach him even over short distances. I still don't see the significance in just that mask. Like, why can't that just be a part of the entire helmet? There doesn't seem to be an engineering advantage to just having that with its own propulsion and power source. What I'm saying is that the human element of human resources is our biggest point of vulnerability. We should start phasing it out immediately. What? Excuse me, Bambi. Hello. Did you just say that? Security. You can't remove the human from human resources. Robots or updated technology are going to be better than humans at repetitive tasks because they don't care if their girlfriend broke up with them or if they didn't have their coffee this morning or if they were late. Smoke alarms and sprinklers are great for when firefighters are on their way, but you still need the human firefighters. Metal detectors are better than just being pat down by a security guard, but you still need the security guard. So even in situations where robots and machines can do the job better than humans, you can't just phase out all the people. This, you're inside my head. It's a, it's a live feed. Come on up, I'll prove it to you. Pinch my arm. I can take it. Pinch me. <gasps> what is that? It's the primary somatosensory cortex. It's the brain's pain center. Minus the hologram, live feed of the brain is very much possible. It's done basically every day in hospitals and it's really, really cool. 
Neurologists and scientists will stimulate various parts of the brain to test all sorts of things. I mean, that's how we know which parts of the brain are responsible for which bodily functions. For example, you can scare someone and watch which parts of their brain light up to find out where fear is processed, or in this case, where pain is processed when Pepper pinches his arm. But you gotta be under an MRI or hooked up to electrodes. I don't believe there's any way of getting a, a hologram to show up by just by putting something little behind your ear. And my suits, they're, uh... Machines. They're part of me. A distraction. Maybe. To say the machines are a part of him isn't a complete stretch. I would consider Tony Stark to be a cyborg just like we are today. Besides the arc reactor literally inside of his chest that sort of makes Tony Stark a cyborg already, there is another device that is literally on our person at all times. Right here, this little, little cell phone. We walk around with our phones permanently, and though they're not surgically implanted, when that phone runs out of battery, so does a lot of our patience and calm, and then up goes the anxiety. The person who has a smartphone has access to all sorts of information, weather, directions, communication of anybody on Earth, regardless of time zone or geographic location, everything is enhanced with a smartphone. There's no need for metal or microprocessors to be surgically implanted into us. We are already cyborgs. Mind signing my drawing? If Richard doesn't mind, you right with this? <laughs> yeah. Dick? Fine with me. What's your name? Aaron. I loved you in A Christmas Story, by the way. Wait, 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 wait. The, the actor in A Christmas Story was Peter Billingsley, who was the engineer that got yelled at in Iron Man 1 and then made a reappearance in Spider-Man Far From Home. Marvel loves to do Easter eggs, and if this was intentional from the very first Iron Man movie, it is one of my favorites. I need you to jump on the roof, right? Recalibrate the ISDNs. Pump it up by about 40%. Got it. All right, it's a mission. Yeah. Tony needs Gary. And Gary needs to Be quiet him. about it. Yeah. Shout out to the comment section. You guys are incredible in there. Thank you so much for adding more value to these videos. I never thought it would be as awesome as it actually is. But at the time that I first made the Iron Man 3 video, I didn't realize that this movie came out in 2013, almost 10 years ago. ISDN was mostly obsolete, and a news truck like that would be on satellite. Another really good point is that the news station is a client, not an internet service provider. There is nothing that they can do on their end to actually boost their internet speed by 40%. Nice timing. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Give me a suit, okay? Oh, I'm sorry, they're, they're only coded to me. What does that mean? I got you covered. That's a lie. Tony just lied to Rose. Maybe that was to save his life, but those various Iron Man suits, they're not only coded for Tony Stark. I mean, we saw earlier when the Malibu house was attacked that Pepper was able to walk around and use the suit's weapons after Jarvis did a retinal scan, and then Tony puts the Mark 42 suit on Killian, which wasn't programmed to be on him for sure, and he told Jarvis to blow it up, which means he could have very much easily just told Jarvis, hey, let Rhodey have a suit, but instead he said they're not that, nah, I don't, I don't believe that. Jarvis got an upgrade too, and he got the title of the most powerful artificial intelligence at this time in the Marvel MCU, because he's controlling all of these suits, each with their own unique abilities, simultaneously coordinating multiple attacks and relinquishing autonomy of a suit when Tony asks for one. The reason I said Jarvis is the most powerful AI at this time in the MCU is because when this movie came out, Ultron was not born. 